Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add shine to a photo, really make the photo look more contrasty and more shiny. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can take an image like this, which is a nice little image, and turn it into something a lot more compelling like this. What we're going to do is warm up the image by killing the color cast in it and also add some shine to the shiny areas of the image, really make the image come to life. So this is the original lost details in the highlights, green color cast not really enhanced the way that we would want it to be and this is the final. It's a much more interesting and compelling and warm image. Here is the original the image open in the develop module in Lightroom and as you can see from the histogram we've got a lot of light action, we've got a lot of dark action and not a lot in the middle and we're losing some detail in the white areas of the image because they're looking blown out. So let's see what we can do with that. The first thing I'm going to do is to bring the highlights down a little bit because that's going to bring some of the detail back into these lighter areas of the image. And I may also want to look at shadows, opening up the shadows or closing them down a bit. Well, I think opening them up right now is going to help me even though I might want to make some changes to the image in a minute because of what I've just done. Having done this, I can now adjust the exposure a little bit, so I'm going to increase the exposure to try and get back the lighter areas of the image. And now let's set our black and white points. So I'm going to do that by holding the Alt or Option key as I drag on the white slider. And I want to take this up to where I'm just starting to get whites in the image. So this is way too far, so I'm just going to back it off until those little pixels just disappear but it's going to allow me to lighten the image just a little bit but without blowing anything out. I'm going to do something similar with the blacks but this time I'm looking for black so I'm going to the left because I want to bring blacks back into the image. This is way too far but with the blacks I'm going to be a little bit heavier than I was with the whites. So I'm going to allow myself a little bit more in the way of black pixels when I'm holding the Alt or Option key. And that's going to give me a little bit of extra contrast as well. I can also boost contrast by dragging on the contrast slider here and that may help the image. And I'm also going to add some clarity and some vibrance. I want it to shine just a little bit. And vibrance to brighten and intensify some of the undersaturated colors because we really don't have a lot of color in this image anyway. Now what we did with adjusting the image has actually also shown up that this image has a color cast and it's almost green. There are almost sort of green colors in this image and they're colors that are really not happy colors for this photo. So let's go and get our white balance selector and let's just target something that should be neutral, it should be white. And if you are looking at the percentages across the bottom of this loop here, you would see that the red channel is way below percentage wise than the green and blue channel. So I'm just going to click once. Well, that's warmed it up for sure, but it's probably over warmed it. But having done that, I can just come back in here and just cool it down a little bit by just dragging a little bit towards the smaller temperatures just to make it a little bit cooler. But we've removed the green because you can see that the tint adjustment here has removed the green from the image. Now I'm thinking that darkening the edges of this would really help because we've got some colors coming in here that perhaps we may not want to see. So I'm going to go to the effects option. I'm going to add a vignette. Again, because I want you to see how the vignette is looking, I'm going to make it a really big vignette and then I'm going to adjust the midpoint because I want to pull it out so that it is just across the corners of the image and then I can just drag it down a little bit and I'll experiment with highlight priority and color priority and even paint overlay to see the best effect. Well, highlight priority is one that I typically use and it's working really well here. 
I think I would like to see a little bit more shine on this image because there are a lot of reflections happening here and a little bit more intense shine might help it. So I'm going to the tone curve and I'm just going straight for strong contrast because I think that will really help. Well, it's helped in a couple of ways. Not only has it shined up the middle of the image, but it's also killed some of the background. Let's have a look at the difference. This is linear and this is strong contrast. So it's actually brought attention into the center of the image at the same time killing some of this unwanted color elsewhere. Now I would like to see the top of this coffee pot as brown. So I'm just going to go in here so that I can see this area very clearly. I'm going to just use the adjustment brush here. I'm going to click on an area just to pin the adjustment brush down. I'm going to press the letter O so that I can see the overlay, so I can see where I'm painting. Just enlarged my brush using the square bracket key. Just going to paint over this coffee pot knob, the sort of thing at the top of the plunger in the coffee pot. Now I'm going to size my brush right down here so I can just get into this area here. Now one of the things that you can do with the adjustment brush, let's just turn the mask off by pressing the letter O, is that we can add color. So I can come in here and find a brown color and that's going to be somewhere in the sort of ready orange area that I'll be able to find a brown color. I can, once I've found the color I want to use, I can increase its saturation or back it off a little bit and just click to finish it off. Now if I haven't got quite all the area I wanted to, I can continue to paint over that area just to make sure that the color is coming in where I want it to be. Now let's just zoom out and see the result. Well, I think that's a little bit much. So let's just go to this adjustment here. I'm just going to click this triangle so I can get the amount slider so I can just back it off a little bit. So I'm really saying, yes, I want this brown color, but I don't want quite so much of it. So I'm backing it off and then I'm just going to click close. Now the only other thing I'm looking at before I finish with this image is I think I've got a little bit too much action, a little bit too much sharpness and crispness in here. and I would like my attention to be drawn a little bit more to this area of the image. So I can kill the sharpness in this area using the radial filter. So I'm just going to drag over the area I want to kill the sharpness in. Just put my radial filter where I want it to be. I want to invert my mask because I want to affect the area in the center of the filter and I'm just going to drag down on clarity. So I'm going to kill the sharpness if you like in this area. I can also bring down sharpness, well at least not have it set at any value. I'm just going to drop the clarity down there and just click close. And so that's bringing our attention a little less into this area of the image and a little bit more into this area of the image. Now I'm going to finish off with some overall sharpening as I should because this is a DNG image. It needs to be sharpened. Let's just click here to select the area then that we want to visualize. So let's just go in here. I want to just see this screw top here. That's a nice area to focus my sharpening on. I'm going to increase my sharpening to quite a high level and then hold the Alt or Option key as I look at the radius of the sharpening that I want to apply. Well, I want a fairly small radius. And typically that will also mean that I want a detail setting that's a little bit larger than my radius but still quite small. And now I'm going to mask it because I don't want to sharpen the back of the image where we've got sort of detail up here. I don't want these areas, these flatter areas of the image to be sharpened. I really just want to limit my sharpening to the action areas of the image, the areas that we're concerned about, which is the coffee pot and its reflections, the sugar and the creamer. And having done that, I'm just going to bring my sharpening level down just a little bit. I'll have a look at the image and just say I've got a bit of color noise in here. I'm not surprising. My camera tends to shoot with quite a bit of color noise. So I'm going to just bring up the 
color noise adjustment here. This is also in the detail panel and this will let me kill some of the color noise and there is also luminance noise which I can adjust for. Now for my camera Lightroom will give me a starting point of 25 for my color noise so I can bring it up a little bit if I want to. Luminance noise is just fixed with the basic adjustment in Lightroom that when you convert from a raw image Lightroom applies certain changes to the image and it already has done some noise reduction but not enough for this particular image so again I've boosted my noise reduction on the image. So let's see how far we've come. This is the original image. It's green. It's green and it it's kind of a nice little composition but it's really not selling the coffee nearly as nicely as it could. And this is the final image. It's warmer. It's got a lot more pinks and warm colors in it. It's also sharper, crisper and a lot more inviting. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.